Our next question, what are your current thoughts on a keto diet? Well, I want to share something, and sometimes, not very often, but sometimes my mind shifts on things a little bit, and I think I used to recommend the keto diet more than I do now, Um, but generally, I never recommended the keto diet for everybody. For me, it's always been a subset of people recommended for the keto diet. Um, I still recommend the keto diet for um, children with epilepsy or having epileptic seizures. I still recommend it for people with MS for a period of time, multiple sclerosis. Um, I do recommend it for some people who need to lose weight, but generally um, I recommend, I, I don't recommend the keto diet very often outside of those unique conditions, some of those neurological disorders and things that I mentioned. Um, and, and the reason is, is that, you know, I think doing any sort of macronutrient and very, very high doses long term tends to tax specific organ system. So for instance, for instance, you don't want to overconsume carbohydrates because of the damage it does to your pancreas and your liver, right? Because your pancreas, uh, it, it can cause di- diabetes, right? It starts to burn out those insulin receptor sites. So you don't want to overconsume carbohydrates because they overburden the organ system or the organ specifically of the pancreas. Well, the keto diet tends to overburden the liver and gallbladder and put too much stress there if you're on it long term. Now, doing it for 90 days, that can be great, you know, or 30 days. So doing the keto diet short term, uh, I'm a fan of that for those, especially those conditions that I mentioned. But I think for most people, following a diet that's more of a regenerative diet, um, where you're really focusing on cellular regeneration and longevity and a personalized medicine approach like a TCM that's a traditional Chinese medicine diet or a GAPS diet, I'm much bigger fans of those diets than AIP is another one. I'm a much bigger fan of those diets than others. And and I think that everybody is unique and everybody needs a diet personalized for them. And I've mentioned this before, but if somebody has cancer, we want their body to start having a lot of autophagy to where their body is eating up and destroying cancer cells, okay? So for that person with cancer, I'm going to recommend some intermittent fasting. I'm going to recommend a diet that's going to be much higher in vegetables and berries and mushrooms and actually lower or moderate in protein. I'd have them actually do more bone broth and less muscle building protein so their body can get into more autophagy, some healthy fats, but not too high. And, but again, a lot, I'd I'd have them do juice vegetables. I would have them do cooked vegetables. I'd have them do some raw and then again, some berries, some much. And that's, that's the diet I would have them do for cancer for most types of cancer, at least. Now, if somebody has inflammatory bowel disease, I would have them do a diet that's going to consist mostly of, um, soups. It's the easiest to digest. It's going to be cooked meat and bone broth and some vegetables and some herbs and maybe rice as well. Okay, and that's the diet I would do for most people who have inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's, colitis, severe forms of leaky gut syndrome, food sensitivities, food allergies that I would have them do that sort of gaps, AIP like diet for those people. Um, But then for somebody, let's say it's a young athlete and they want to put on muscle and then for them, it's a very different diet. It's very high protein, very high, more carbohydrates. So my point there is, is that, you know, for everybody, you need a different type of diet. Every single person is unique. Um, and so that, that, that's, that's the way that I would answer that. So keto diet, yeah, there's a subset of about 10% of people that should be on a keto diet and are really going to thrive on it. And same thing goes for carnivore diets. You know, a a friend of mine uh, that I've talked to in the past, Michaela Peterson, she does the lion diet or carnivore diet. And there are people doing that for a period of time that really works for them. Now, do I think that's the ideal diet long term? No, if especially if they can get to their body to where they're not reacting to other foods. But I do think typically for most people, let's say the average person, the diet should be vegetables, meat, as the basis of the entire diet, meat and vegetables, meat and vegetables, meat and vegetables. And when I say meat, I also mean organ meats and bone broth. There should be a balance of all of those vegetables, maybe a little bit of fruit and some things like rice or sweet potato, some healthy fats from olive and coconut and some things like mushrooms. And if someone can follow that diet, that's not, you know, 70% of people, those that's, that's what they should be on. 
Uh, but again, keto diet for me, again, I think it's really good for certain conditions or for short periods, periods of time for some people. But long term, for some people, it's going to be too much stress on the liver or gallbladder. Now, let me say this as well. It depends on how you're wired emotionally. Someone like myself who my liver and gallbladder work more than most people because um, the emotions that I experience when I come into conflict are frustration and impatience. And those, those are more taxing to the liver. Um, versus if you're more of a person that worries a lot and you worry constantly, that impacts the pancreas. So you need to be more careful with that organ. So you might do a little higher fat and really stay low carb for longer, longer periods of time. So, so again, it all comes down to this. You need to personalize the diet for you. It's so important. And part of that is becoming aware of your own body. For us, instance, so we got, we've gone through this whole thing of no grains. I've never been completely no grain because I think lacto fermented foods, people have eaten for thousands of years, like whole grain sourdough bread, um, sprouted whole grains, uh, you know, like like sprouted oats uh, and rice. I mean, the lo- the longest living country in the world, Japan, with the most centurions, Okinawa, rice is the number one food they're getting regularly. And they have the longest lifespan. So to tell me that no grains, you know, someone should never eat grains, that's just not reality. But again, it, some of this has to do with your genetics. If you If your ancestors grew up eating rice, their bodies developed being able to tolerate it better. If, if I'm, you know, I've got more, more German, uh, in, in my blood. And so I probably do really well with potatoes, which by the way, as I've done my blood glucose monitor on my arm, the continuous glucose monitoring, I notice my body actually tolerates potatoes incredibly well. And p- part of that might be due to my genetics. And so all that being said, follow a unique diet that is customized for you. Hey, if you liked this, then watch my full episode right here. 